even with today's advanced ADOS technology, things still happen, especially when your car is turned off and another car backs into you and destroys your front fascia. Just like in the case of this Genesis G70, which required the bumper to be removed and replaced, which of course means we've got to calibrate that front radar. We're gonna show you how to do that next. Before we begin the calibration process, I do wanna give a quick shout out to all of the people, men and women in the collision industry, making cars like this look brand new again. You guys do a great job. I definitely wanna say thanks, and I hope everybody can support the collision industry as much as I do. So we're gonna go ahead and calibrate that front radar. The bumper has been put on. Now this will pose a couple challenges along the way, and we'll show you what that means, and I'll give you some tech tips along the way to be able to do that. Let's go ahead and get into diagnostics on this vehicle. I've already got the VCI already hooked up. We're gonna let it auto ID this once the uh, VCI connects with the uh, scan tool here. All right, our VCI is hooked up to the car, so we're gonna go ahead and get into diagnostics, auto ID this vehicle. And you'll see our Genesis 2022 just showed up. And it's also warning us that there is a secure gateway on this vehicle. The ADOS link does have the ability to unlock that secure gateway, so we can do the calibrations we need to do to this vehicle. Again, before we start and actually go into calibrations, we're gonna to wanna to do a pre-scan. So read DTCs, select all. You wanna make sure there's no DTCs related to that impact collision. So there is a lot of uh, modules on this vehicle. Now the good thing is the pre-scan will be saved to the tablet, so you can print that off email it to a customer and keep a copy for your records as well. You also want to do that with the post scan as well. Our pre-scan has completed. There are no DTCs related to the incident involving the front fascia. So we're going to go ahead and back out and get into our ADOS calibration. All right, we got a couple options available for us. We're going to select the radar. and you do have the option to do dynamic or static. We're gonna go through the static procedure today. And the reason I'm not gonna go through the drive procedure is that's relatively simple, drive the vehicle. However, when a vehicle like this has been involved in a major collision and the radar's been replaced, maybe the bracket was damaged, this way would be the way you'd wanna do it in a shop. And preferably with the front fascia removed. Our fascia has been reinstalled which creates some unique challenges that I'll show you. And we'll walk through those so we can maybe give you a couple tech tips. So we selected static and it's gonna tell us here what we need and everything I do need to do this calibration is to my left and right. And a couple extra things that I brought out here just to show you. So the gateway is unlocked on this vehicle, allowing us to do this calibration now and we're gonna walk through this step by step. You'll notice I'm not using the DOS 3000 rack. I don't need it this time. I need the corner reflector. And of course, once we get into that, it shows us exactly what we need. And I said, there's a couple other helpful things that I have over here that you're gonna to wanna to use as well. So we'll press continue. Now it's also gonna tell you the mechanical mounting should be within specification. There are procedures and there are specifications in the manuals on how to adjust this radar to make sure that it's vertical before you do the calibration. Again, this one wasn't damaged, it didn't have any issues. They did check it with a level before they reinstalled the bumper or the fascia, as you will, and said everything looked okay. Remember, we're gonna perform the calibration anytime the fascia has been removed, damaged, new, new radar has been installed, anything where it's been uh, tweaked a little bit or um, moved around. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure that our vehicle's on a level surface, which we have. Make sure your tires are set to the correct pressures, uh, no unnecessary weight in the vehicle. All of these things we've said a lot uh, in the past, you know, good lighting. We don't want anything around us. We wanna have, be in a big open space to do these calibrations. We're gonna need a little bit of room in the front of the vehicle for this as well. 
Here's the oddball thing here now on this one that I've never run across. So on the back of the front radar is a code you need. Now, that poses a challenge to get to that front radar. Unfortunately, my radar is right behind here. This cover does not separate from the grill. So you can see where the radar is, but I can't see the back of it. That creates a huge problem if the bumper has been reinstalled like this one has. I can't go from under the hood because there's an active shutter and it blocks access to this. Going from underneath, you're gonna have to remove the entire belly pan to see if you can get it access like that. So what I found a way to do is one, you could try if you got a small enough one, a small enough, this one's too big, obviously. If you had a small dental mirror, you might be able to get back there and light it from the front so you can see those numbers. Cause you're looking for these very two top numbers up here on the lot number. What I was able to use, it's basically a bore scope. I was able to get back behind here and using my bore scope and some lights, I was able to read that lot number. It's very difficult to do. This will probably take you more time to do this than the actual procedure, but it did work. Saved me from having to remove a lot of components or asking uh, my friends at the body shop, hey, can you guys take that fascia back off? I, you know, I don't wanna do that. So this did work. And I was able to get that lot number that they're asking for, because you actually have to enter that a little bit later in the procedure. Mine was 06, by the way. So we're gonna go ahead and go through the guided summary and you'll see how much space we need. All right, so we're gonna start positioning our radar stand. We're gonna need our distance measuring tool or laser. and the actual black stand. I'm gonna turn this on, set that in there. And it tells you to point it at where the license plate would be. So I'm just gonna kind of go right on this grill here. I'm just gonna get it there just to get my distance set. So I've got it right there. We'll press continue now. So now we need our laser alignment tool on the top of our stand. Now the service information tells us to open up the trunk to use the rear emblem as our center line and match it up with the front emblem on this car. However, there is no emblem to use on the Genesis. So what I'm going to use is the actual antenna for the satellite radio as my center line. And I'm gonna match that up with the grill. So we're gonna split that here, go all the way back to that antenna, and that'll be our center line. And we've gotta get this back to 250 centimeters using the distance laser. So we're gonna be kind of finagling things here a little bit. I've gotta get this distance to 250 centimeters. Unfortunately, I gotta turn this laser on, makes a beeping sound. So you can see I'm not centered yet. Let's go ahead and kind of And we still gotta make sure we're at 25, or we gotta make sure we're at 250 centimeters at the same time. All right, I've got my distance. I've got this center line established as well now. As adjust the corner reflector offset three millimeters. So right now we're set to zero down here. All I'm gonna do is slide this over to the three that's marked already for you on our tool and we'll move to the next step, which is gonna have us set the height now. So now I'm gonna take 
my distance tool, turn it upside down, and we've got to go to 581 millimeters. I've got the height set. I've got my offset of the actual reflector. I'm going to take this out now. Done with that. And we'll press continue. Now we've got to make sure our alignments stand. And we've got a lit, uh, we've got a bubble there, level, to make sure this is good. Everything's got to be straight. And thankfully, I am perfect right now with level. So I don't need to mess with the adjustment at all. If yours was off, go ahead and adjust it to make sure that that's level. All right, so make sure nobody enters the area during the calibration. I'm gonna move this out of the way too. I don't want anything in the way. So we're press continue to begin the calibrations. Here's that where they asked for your lot number. So I'm gonna enter 06. And we'll press continue. Continue again. And the calibration was successfully completed. So we're all done. Worked out good. The angles were okay. Everything at the body shot that they did, they did a great job as well. Last thing you want to do, and just like any other time you do a calibration, make sure you do a post scan. And then of course, test drive the vehicle, verify that everything is working as designed before you return it to the customer. You want to learn any more about ADOS and other calibration procedures? Make sure you check out the Hunter YouTube learning page where you'll see my friendly face doing a bunch other vehicles and procedures. We'll see you next time. Be safe out there.